Hi, welcome to our Pharma Topics channel. Welcome to the fourth series of uh, clinical research and pharmacovigilance. In this, uh, we are going to see about uh, non-randomized control trials and observational studies. What is the difference between uh, randomized and uh, non-randomized control trial? The key difference between randomized and non-randomized studies is that in the former, the investigator allocates the interventions to participants randomly example by throwing uh, dice or coins or by using uh, computer software to generate an unpredictable sequence in non-randomized control trials either the participants or the investigator allocates the intervention let us see the key characteristics of non-randomized control trials first is group assignment participants are assigned to different groups based on the criteria such as their location, preferences, medical history or any other random factors. Control group. Similar to randomized control trials, the non-randomized control trials typically have a control group that receives either placebo or a standard treatment. The control group helps uh, provide a basis for comparison with the intervention group. Blinding. Blinding may be single or double. Uh, blinding involves uh, masking either the participants, researchers or both from knowing which group each participant belongs to. It reduces the bias. Then the outcome measures. Outcome measures are chosen uh, to evaluate the effects of their intervention. These measures could uh, include improvements in the symptoms, disease progression or other relevant endpoints. Statistical analysis. Statistical methods are used to analyze the data and assess uh, whether there are uh, significant differences between the intervention and the control groups. Ethical considerations. Ethical principles uh, including obtaining the informed consent from the participants and prioritizing their safety are followed throughout the trial. Limitations of non-randomized control trials. Non-randomized control trials have some limitations compared to the randomized control trials due to the potential for selection bias and other confounding factors. The non-random assignment of participants can lead to unequal distribution of characteristics between the groups, making it challenging to attribute observed differences solely to the intervention. Researchers often use statistical techniques to adjust for these imbalances and attempt to control for the confounding variables. When randomized non-randomized control trials are used, while the randomized control trials are generally considered uh, as a gold standard for evaluating the effects of interventions due to their ability to minimize bias, non-randomized control trials can still provide valuable insights, especially when conducting a randomized control trial is impractical, unethical or not feasible. In those cases, NRCTs are used. NRCTs are often used in situations where randomization is difficult such as when the interventions are applied to large communities, entire regions or historical cohorts. However, uh, the results of non-randomized control trials should be interpreted with caution considering the potential limitations introduced by the non-random assignment of the participants. Let us see the observational studies. One is a cohort study and a case control study. Cohort study. A cohort study is a type of observational research design used in medical and epidemiological research to investigate the association between the exposures such as risk factors, interventions or characteristics and the outcomes such as diseases, health conditions or events over a particular over time. In cohort study, a group of individuals is identified based on a common characteristic or exposure status and their health outcomes are tracked over a definite period. <coughs> there are two types of cohort studies. One is a prospective cohort study. In prospective cohort study, researchers identify a group of individuals who share a specific exposure or characteristic and follow them forward in time. Participants are followed from present into the future and their health out outcomes are observed and documented over the course of the study. Retrospective cohort study. In the retrospective cohort study, researchers identify a group of individuals who were exposed to a certain factor in the past 
and then look back in time to analyze their health outcomes. Data are collected from the existing records such as medical charts, databases or historical documents. Let us see a prospective cohort study. It will appear like this. So when at the start of the research, a researcher recruits healthy sample that is called a cohort. Then the data collection or the risk factors and the outcome are taken into consideration. Uh, this, that is from the sample you may have smokers and you may have non-smokers. Researcher collects the data on risk factor of exposure. Here the risk factor is smoking and the outcomes the incidences of cancer for example lung cancer. Then the risk factors whether they lead to the outcome. So there is uh, some patients are, infect, uh, are affected with the lung cancer. Then some are not affected with the disease. So the researcher declares whether the exposure is associated with cancer or not. So this is a prospective cohort study. Let us see retrospective cohort study. So the uh, at the start of the research, the researcher verifies the medical records, the database and uh, other details uh, of the patients who have a smoking history. Then data collection on the risk factors and outcomes. Researchers uh, collect the data uh, for the how whether they are smokers and connect the outcomes uh, that is the incidences of cancer. Then it is the same thing. Uh, they declare uh, whether uh, the particular group is having if the smoking influences the uh, cancer or, or what. That is called a retrospective cohort study. Key features of cohort study. Exposure assessment. Researchers identify the exposure of interest that is smoking, medication use or dietary habits and group participants based on whether they have, an, have been exposed are unexposed to the factor. Follow up. Cohort studies involve tracking participants over time to observe the development of outcomes of interest. Follow up can be short term or long term depending on the research question. Data collection. Data on exposures, outcomes and potential confounding variables are collected from the participants through various methods such as questionnaires, medical examinations or medical records. Then comparison group. Cohort studies often have a comparison group of individuals who are not exposed to the factor of interest. This allows researchers to compare the incidence of outcomes between the exposed and unexposed groups. Prospective versus retrospective. In prospective cohort studies, the data collection starts at the beginning of the study and continues into the future. But in case of retrospective cohort studies, the data collection relies on the existing records and the historical data. Longitudinal design. Cohort studies uh, have a longitudinal design which means the participants are followed over time to track the changes in their health status and outcomes. Use of cohort uh, studies. Cohort studies are valuable for exploring relationships between the exposures and outcomes for studying the development of diseases or conditions over time. They can provide insights into the natural history of diseases, identify the risk factors, assess casualty and contribute to the development of prevention and intervention strategies. However, cohort studies may be prone to biases such as selection bias or loss to follow up that need to be carefully considered and addressed during the study design and analysis. Next is case control uh, study design. Let us take the patients exposed to smoking, then uh, patients not exposed to smoking. So they are uh, divided into uh, patients with lung cancer, they are called uh, cases and people exposed to smoking and people not exposed to smoking are taken and they are uh, segregated into patient, patients with lung cancer, they act as controls. So First is known patients who are smokers and next is people who are smokers. So there are cases and controls that is why it is called a case control study. Key features of case control studies. Selection of cases. Researchers identify individuals who have the health outcome of interest. 
these individuals are selected based on the specific criteria such as having a particular disease or condition selection of controls controls are the individuals uh, without the health outcome of interest ideally chosen from the same population as the cases controls uh, should have uh, should be selected in a way uh, such that they are comparable to the cases in terms of relevant characteristics like uh, age gender and other potential confounding factors exposure assessment data on exposure to risk factors interventions or characteristics are collected from both the cases and controls usually through interviews questionnaires or medical records then retrospective design case control studies are often retrospective meaning that the exposure data are collected after the health outcome has occurred researchers look back in time to assess the exposure status odds ratio the main measure of association in a case control study is odds ratio which quantifies the strength and direction of association between the exposure and the outcome efficiency case control studies are particularly useful for studying the rare diseases or outcomes as cases can be identified more easily than in other study designs bias and confounding because uh, the exposure data are collected after the outcome has occurred case control studies are susceptible to recall bias and other biases efforts are made to control for potential confounding factors during the study design and analysis case control study so case control studies are valuable for exploring associations between exposures and outcomes especially when randomized control trials or prospective uh, cohort studies are not feasible or ethical they are often used to generate hypothesis and provide uh, preliminary evidence for further research however because they are retrospective they rely on recall of past exposures they have limitations in terms of uh, establishing temporal relationships and avoiding bias careful uh, study design rigorous con uh, control selection and appropriate uh, statistical analysis are crucial to ensure the validity and reliability of the findings from the case control studies so it's a very short information of uh, the uh, cohort study and the case control study i hope uh, it will be useful for you thank you for listening happy learning kindly share this to more of your friends kindly subscribe to our pharma topics channel if you like this video kindly press the like button kindly go through all the series of videos available in the playlist clinical research and pharmacovigilance in provided in the pharma topics channel and score well in the forthcoming exams